So this is a little bit of uh, channel trading with uh, Andrew's Pitchfork. I don't know if anybody's seen an Andrew's Pitchfork, but it's really just a triple channel. It's kind of like redneck trading because you're using a pitchfork. And uh, I thought when I first saw this uh, technique, I thought, man, that is just amazing because it's like if you uh and just taking two channels and building an andrews fit pitchfork manually here so if i connect these two lows here and then i drag this to the triple top okay so this is the middle tine of the pitchfork and then just double click that channel and hold down the control key and drag it over so that you're stacked on top of uh this here so now you have an equal proportional move and people love that all the time you see this uh, measured move talk people talk about so see how we revisit that but in closing prices only so you literally got to pull the trigger here on the four hour or you've got to be ready you you don't need it you don't need this to trade because you already got a double top here so you don't want to over confirmation and I'm just speaking from my own uh, view of uh, there's the horizontal Trump trumps the uh, the momentum view is this uh, channel that I drew going up. That's the momentum pivots. But the ultimate pivot is always going to be just where the market has um, a memory of previous uh, levels, which are really critical. So this bottom becomes this top because well it's just kind of a no-brainer trade in a way because um if it was really going to keep going up they would have trapped the bears paused here and then gone on a marching tour here but this is the low risk entry whereas this a brutal topping here may be beyond your risk level tolerance but you play it differently up here you kind of sell stop into it you sell limit into it and you really kind of have to range trade that that's about uh 24 hours a chop and then there was always the kind of classic well you just have your sell stops get filled here you know and maybe it just you have take profit so it just gushes out of that whole thing and when it gets to here you scalp that now that's the kind of the trap scalp trade where you got your first buy limit starts here and maybe you do have buy limits all the way down here because you know this is your true capture zone after all if you trade new lows if you buy new lows because it's on sale you could scalp to there and be like you know what but now here's the problem and this is where you have to go and become bi-directional and just say, I'm putting in sell stops, sell stops, sell stops, because we are not getting follow through. Anytime it goes sideways, you could just literally put on a hedge and it does make money. Believe it or not, even though your insurance policy is that you have paid, like, see sideways here, breakout. You lost a leg. But it's such a vicious breakout because it went sideways too long. Even here, after eight hours of sideways, hello. And here's kind of a flag, but there's a baby kickback before they come up and they trap. And this is the uh, New Zealand dollar, USD. Same story, different currency. Here's the big trap. we got to go punch up here. And everybody's like, look at that puppy go. Your first sells start here. Even if you're a, this is the ultimate swing trade entry. Um, you're not waiting for confirmation. You're not drawing a trend line here. Maybe you are. Maybe you did sell here. And you made this much money. But your stop would have been here. If it's a true structure stop, you're risking this much to make this is a break even. But if we get up in here, maybe you're, even the sell stops that were robotically placed here made more money than waiting to break this trend line or this tighter trend line. The trap trade, where they're trapping these bulls, 
Man, and that talk about fast money. And then you're buying all the way into here. Maybe you're totally out. Maybe you go flat. I mean, certainly in hindsight, you shorted up here. You started selling up here. When it got to here, you started getting out. By here, you're flat. Here, you start buying. You load the fucking wagon. In this whole vault. Here's your first scalp out of the gate. Then you have to get out here just because structurally you have to. But wait, don't worry. And this is what it's hard to believe in these markets. It really is. It takes a long time to believe that. You mean to tell me that I was going to get it even cheaper later? Right at rock bottom prices. On the fringe. This is the top that becomes the bottom that holds this whole thread together. The sell-off is just a flush. This is the trend trade, right? Because is this a trend? No, this is a counter trend. This is the pullbacks. All pullbacks will be fast. Another thing is, when you see the market plunging like a horror just keep pressing the buy stop trigger. You like you, and then you've got your buy limits here. So if you're impatient, you're just like, or you're just buying every four hours of the market going. You son of a bitch, and you've got buy limits here. Right? And you're like, I know we're going up. Now, another perverse thing here is that if you have a stop here and you just watched it come all the way to here and you did not get the fuck out at resistance and you watched it come all the way back to here and you're like, God damn it. And this is a whole nother week. Mind you, from here to here is one week. And you're a trend trader. I'm telling you right now, you're just married to a pre-existing condition called 80% range. 80% of your relationship with the hottest babe on the planet is going to the store and coming home. I went to work and went home. And went to, Where's this relationship going? Well, you know what? One day we're going to go on vacation. Really? Yeah, well, in about four weeks. So I can't hang, you know, like like if I was like, oh, when are we going to, there's a nice uh, triple top hits the target. So you're in, so you're in a channel within a channel, so you have the giant channel. But uh, I guess I got sidetracked again, but I was really wanted to show you the Andrews pitchfork, but the horizontal thing came into the picture because the market has... Um, People talk about structure. It's a horizontal view of structure. In other words, this is the ceiling becomes a floor view. But the momentum or the channels that... I always think channels are the ones that are on an angle. Can those are those are directional, but it doesn't mean that you can't make more money counter-trend trading. Like, yeah, tell me what the trend is. In fact, everybody's going to agree that this is an uptrend, right? But so how would have that have mattered the way you played it? It wouldn't, right? So there were some good uptrend trades here. Most of the uptrend trading, except for this last big blast here, took a long time. This last one was like, wow. So the, the Anders Pitchfork idea is that, and we're not going to break out the real Pitchfork because it's too hard, it's too squirrely to move around. Besides, if you're a channel trader and you want to go to a Pitchfork trading if you want to step up to that big leap in thought, or you have quad, I don't know if you can make a, uh, I think they even have fib channels out there. I'm not sure. I know they have time fib, but I think there is a way to. So you just pick any lows, any, like, see here, pick uh, these two lows here, and then you just copy this. You, you pick the next low, and that's your, uh, your one of your you just make like six uh, channels, and then that's two pitchforks. So here's your next. Uh, you should see the market come back to this, right? You're holding this um, thread, and it's like magic. 
and the tops become bottoms on an angle. So it's like a momentum support and resistance as opposed to the hard horizontal world. And here you have a almost a, a proposed port, an even linear proportion, no fib here, just linear. Because uh, it's bad enough the market's all over the fucking place, like your bad relationship. And then uh, you would just stretch this out to say... Um, now here I do get a little bit, so I try to be precise, because the closing price there is your only kind of uh, anchor. So you anchor to that, and you see this serves as your uh, tops become bottoms, bottoms become top, and this is the median point, like in a pitchfork, this is the middle of the road, or zero point on MECD, where it's right in the uh, indecision zone. And then here is the outer band, so if you're a Bollinger band, you know, here's your outside. You want to get in this wick window, the band. So you want to be as far away from the market as possible in a way. In, in a way, you want to be, you do want that brutally difficult where it takes a lot of patience to get filled. And here's, that's the bullish uh, story. Here's the bearish story. Maybe you want to make a different color for that just to uh, get it. A different feel for I guess what it means to you I guess you have to have some meaning to you know what's the point of putting stuff up here unless you attach some kind of meaning or rule system to it I don't know if that's even a different color it's just too close I'm just gonna make it black because it's going down so if you hang this on the down story, which is, uh, I'll try to find a, a decent, uh, here's a triple top. But this is why people use all that stuff, because, yeah, it doesn't matter what, you know, this is going to line up on something. The market's going to turn on something. So use this, and so you have this uh, narrow channel, and now copy this. Hold down the control key and make another one. And this would be your counter trend pivot, your momentum pivot, I guess you'd call it. And just make it linear. This Fibonacci is too hard to work around. And then just, so you just basically, it's almost like a GAN grid, but you've just kind of taken the GAN grid and segmented it here. So here's your wick window up here. And then you're going to come in with, once that's done, and of course this is a steeper rate, you'd also pick how much money you're expecting to win and lose per day. So if you are if you like these steep trades, then you would just make this your, uh, you're picking the, the frequency of your own trading here. You say, I like this move, right? So copy that over and you're looking for that move you're looking for that kind of when you see that and it, see it's happening here for literally straight down on the close it's closing at that rate of change right there same thing here like how how long do you want to be in the trade look how the velocity of this is the same punch down rate of change. I mean, this is incredible velocity compared to this creeper gear where everybody's moving averages have all synced up and everybody's like, you can draw a million uh, pivots in here. And um, certainly in the long run, if you go in here and fix the, the scale and then you start to look into the uh, broader the channel within the channel within the channel you know this is just never ending right down to i guess a probably a five second chart this is a very shallow drifting channel here and at this point i'm probably going to have to just go for that channel i think i over channelized it there's this monster channel here but it's very drifty not a lot of fun um 
pipwise, you know, this is why some of these things are just, you got to zoom out. So maybe you come out to this fractal. Now you're way out here. Go all the way to the bottom of this thing. And take a look at the uh, the way that you would have to. Now you have to have all the patience of like a, a saint at this point. Say you uh, you built everything off of this, and the reason why you picked this price here is because it's the first top bottom. When you're looking back to confirm that this is a valid rollover point. And you have your first trend indication, your first pullback. There's the first time you can actually draw a trend line. You could have also draw one back here. But you're starting to get off to the races. And so you got this interval here. Then you take this and put it on the top becomes a bottom. On the upper channel, this would be the middle tine on the pitchfork. Where you get... The triple bottom off of this quadruple top. Now hold down the control key. Click on this, drag it over. And you just go for a linear interval. And take it out in the future. So you're getting this perfect inflection rate on this. And here you would have never got filled up in this thing. Now you put the horizontal story on top of the uh, rate of change. So here's your top. You're looking to get filled and it never comes back. So you have to settle for the closing prices here. So the signal service here. And this is another reason why, yeah, this guy can make money on a signal service because he can tell people, listen, we're right here, right now. We're about to go and break this out. Just get the fuck in here. Put a stop in here. And now you can ride it to here. You can see they've trapped the people at the double top here. They trap these breakout traders. They pull it back. So they pull it back to that pitchfork. That middle tine, so you're feeding off that middle tine. Um, so... To be honest and not cheat with the system, you have to, and I guess this is what people call backtesting, you have to validate that the theory works. So you're just going to go. You're looking for, you want to make steep money. You want to get rich quick. So you're going to just find any pullback, and you know, even this one here. So it pulls back to here, and then you just copy that. You put this and you hang it off this so you know those two exist. And you just copy that out. So you're going to copy it here. You, can, you can't even see where that's pointing to. And then you copy the down, the down part of that too. So you have to go both directions off of this in case it goes down. You want to know how far when the next bounce point is so you need some type of uh, linear grid here I should just put the GAN grid up there I should have stretched that out more so this is like <clears throat> you're looking for the setup in here so you're going to have to find a top bottom that coincides with the loss of momentum, which gives you the delta for the breakout. And these things are just a linear. You, you, this is the rate of change you're looking for. The, you want a high velocity pullback. Top becomes bottom. So you have a triple top becomes, um, well, not quite a bottom here. You would have bought here. They would have stopped you out. Then you're looking to this, um, this support zone here. So this is your first kind of bounce. And you're, if you're going to mechanically trade it, your buy stops are stacking up here, and you're going to retest, and you're going to trap 
these people. So you need the down you need the down story rollover on here too. So you gotta put in the you gotta know what the bears are thinking. So let's pick a pick a pick a, pick a, step, a steep uh, rate of change on the downside. Uh, there's really nothing here. I'm just gonna go perpendicular to what there is there right now. So to make it equal, and this would be like, um, if you're gonna sell 60 pips above you, you're gonna buy 60 pips below you. So this is why the GAN grid is cool because it's just gonna give you a symmetrical. Uh, place to get in and out. So here I probably resize this to this this down thing here. So the GAN GAN grid. I'm not on a, a symmetrical screen right now, so my grid the grid's a little off here. I'm running outside the recommended resolution of my monitor. So you, and if you want to trade more frequently, you would just tighten up the the uh, pitchfork so it looks like this now and if you really wanted to in this four hour chart though because if as soon as you go it may look like you're um, slicing it too thin here but it is the four hour chart if you go to the next time frame the one hour you know all of a sudden this stuff here would look make sense because look how this perfectly rides down at this angle completely 40 almost well like i said this is not going to translate too well the screen 45 degree this is the um support becomes resistance although they do punch through and trap these guys we rip all the way back and um we if if this is the rate if this is the rate of change and your breakout, your sell bot, this is the doji, which was this entry. This is also the big issue is that we didn't hold this floor. So the fact that this part was not the buy, you wouldn't have got filled on your sell limits here. You never even got up there. But that's why you just keep bidding it down, looking for a new, looking to grab this this uh, floor and here's a failed attempt to punch through didn't quite make it there but people with sell limits up there they counter trend traded it to here here is your double top becomes a bottom again and the volatility bots getting in here the first chance really for the volatility bot to even get on board in fact if you don't you don't have to back to um, like here's the back test show me the last um show me a 12 hour period of sideways action that would be my back test if you can't see that on the chart then you know just get a uh, eight hour chart just keep stretching it out you can kind of see it better on the stretch out this is 10 pips this grid so if you gave it a 20 pip stop you can kind of see your the way you get filled on this. So your low volatility, looking for a 10 pip range to initiate the trade. So you don't, the only chance is really kind of like here it gets quiet. That's a four hour chart. With about eight hours of 15 pip, maybe here. Here you're outside the ATR, it never qualifies. <clears throat> here a little bit. Certainly a stall out here. And then uh, here's maybe the only flag breakout. And there's the only other flag breakout. Anyways, that's my New Zealand dollar update. I'm about to get smashed by a storm coming in here.